Hi there. In this video I'm going to talk about how to create a linked or cascading drop-down list. A linked drop-down list is where the value that you use in one drop-down list is going to affect the values that you see in the second drop-down list. In other words, if I choose drinks in this first yellow box, I'd expect to see Coca-Cola, Sprite and Tizer in the second drop-down list. Now the traditional approach to this um, is relatively straightforward. First of all, add data validation to the first drop-down list. Like so. And then use named ranges and the indirect formula to create the second. So, first of all, name these different ranges. I'm using a keyboard shortcut control shift F3 and I'm going to use the top row to name these ranges so now this range is called drinks this range is called crisps etc etc and then here I can use the indirect formula I'll talk more about the indirect formula later on if you've not seen it to use this cell B3 so that means if I choose something here it then looks for a named range called drinks and then brings down the list of drinks however if I choose crisps it gives me a different list now for, for most people this technique works fine if that's all you need to do I'd, con I'd uh, suggest that you use that methodology. There's lots of videos on YouTube that will tell you how to do that in more detail. The problem with this technique is that what happens if your lists change, and this is what used to happen to me, either the number of lists would change, the values in those lists would change, or the actual lists themselves would change completely. If my list changed to something different, then obviously my drop-down lists no longer work. And I found myself continually having to redefine named ranges and redefine my data validation lists all the time. So this video is going to show you how I can do something similar. So basically it looks the same so far, but now if the list changes, the drop-down lists automatically take that into consideration. So how did I do it? This technique uses a number of different formulas. I'll talk you through each of the formulas individually. To begin with, I'm just going to start off using the straightforward data validation for the categories or the different lists. And I'll just do that exactly as before. I'll change this later on to be something more sophisticated, but just to give us a starting place. So we've got our first drop down list. Then what I want to do is create a formula that goes to find whatever someone has chosen here. So in other words, if someone's chosen drinks, I want to go and find which column drinks belongs to. So I can achieve this by using a few formulas, starting off with the match formula. So if I use equals match, the value I'm looking for is whatever is in that cell. I'm going to click F4 to look that down. And the array I'm going to look at is the whole of the first row. So you can drag this out as far as you want, making sure that it includes as many columns as you're ever going to likely need. F4 just locks that down. The match type is zero because I want to find an exact match. And that's going to say that it finds drinks in the fourth column along. One, two, three, four. But if I select biscuits, it's going to tell me that it finds that in the sixth column along. That's fine, but what I actually want is the column letter rather than a number. So how do I create a column letter rather than a number? For this technique, I'm going to use a couple of formulas. The first one is address. So if you've not seen the address formula, it's pretty straightforward. If I type in a row number and a column number and enter that in, it's going to tell me what cell that is. So I chose one which is row 1 and column 2 so it told me that that's B1. I can amend this formula slightly so rather than giving me an absolute reference, in other words with the dollar signs, I can put a 4 there 
which gives me a relative reference, so now it just gives me B1. So I can use this to create a cell address. If I amend this formula by putting address first row, all of that formula, and then four to make it relative, it'll tell me that it finds biscuits in cell F1. So far, so good. Now, I don't want F1, I just want F. So I can just put that substitute on there. Substitute just takes something and replaces it with something else. So the text I'm interested in is all that formula. The thing that I want to replace is the number one, and I want to replace that with nothing. So I just put inverted commas, inverted commas. And now this just gives me just the letter F, which is what I'm looking for. The second thing I want to know is where the end of the list is. If I'm looking at biscuits, then the end of the list is here in F4. If I'm looking at crisps, it'll be in E5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another formula equals, and this time I'm going to use count if. I'm going to look at the range. So if I'm looking for biscuits, it would be F1 all the way through to, or you can, in fact, you can just use the whole column F to F if you're sure that there's going to be nothing underneath that. And the criteria you're looking for is anything at all. And the way to say that in Excel is inverted commas, question mark, asterisk, inverted commas. So that tells me there are one, two, three, four items in column F. Now, at the moment, this is showing me column F. Well, I want this to be dynamic. It's going to show me how many items there are in any column. So in order to do this, I need to replace these Fs in here with this cell here. The way I'm going to do that is by using the indirect formula. I mentioned this before. I'll just demonstrate how this works because it's an incredibly useful formula. If I say here equals F2, very straightforward, that returns fig roll. Now I can change this by using the indirect function and pass through a text string called F2 and that will still return for me fig roll. Now why is this useful you might ask? Well, the reason it's useful is because I can then create F2 using more dynamic means. So for example I can get rid of F2 here and instead say this cell concatenated together with the number 2 and this still works and that's important because now if I change this, then it, this changes, which then automatically changes this cell here. So now you can use that technique to, instead of having F to F, have count if indirect this cell and a colon we have to put in inverted commas and this cell again. Close the indirect and enter that one and you'll see it still works but now this is dynamic. In drinks D4 is the end column whereas crisps E5 is the last column. I'll delete that old formula we don't need that. So this is really useful. I now know where the list is going to start, it's always going to start in this column on the second row. It's always going to end on this column and this row. So I can use this information to create my drop-down list. Now, unfortunately, I can't put this directly into the data validation drop-down list because there's a character limit in there. So I have to create a named range first. So I'm going to go to Formulas and create a new named range. And I'm going to call it drop down. So the formula I want in here is equals indirect and the formula is made up of whatever is in this cell and the number 2 which I need inverted commas and then a colon another inverted commas and whatever's in this cell and whatever is in this cell, which in this case is going to evaluate to indirect E2 to E5. Okay, 
check to see if this is working by using this little button here and that is just showing me that's correct. Close that down and then put that named range into the data validation. Equals drop down and you'll see that that's working even if I change this around. And this will work even if the entire list completely changes. As soon as I choose something from the drop down, then it's going to collect the correct amount of information. Now you might have noticed that because the number of rows that I've chosen in this particular case has gone from three to four, then my initial drop down doesn't quite work now. So I can do something similar here to make this range a little bit more dynamic. Equals count if. The range I'm looking for is all of this. Again, just choose as many columns as you think is ever going to be necessary or just the whole thing. And the criteria is anything is inverted commas, question mark, asterisk, inverted commas. And that tells me that there are four things here. So if I want to know which column is the last column here, I need to add on, in my case, three, because I've got three columns that I know are going to be empty. And therefore the last column is always going to be however many things I have in this row plus three, in this case seven. And then finally I can use the same technique as before to work out what that column letter is. So it tells me that in this case the last column that I'm looking at is G. If I add another list it'll tell me that the final column is H. So now I can use a different formula to create a dynamic range. The range that I want is always from D1 to whatever is the last column 1. So I'm going to use this formula again. It says equals indirect and the text that I want here is D1 to and this cell here and one. Now this won't actually give me an answer in a cell, however if I put this into the data validation formula, then now this will give me as many items as we have. Now if you wanted to, you don't have to do this, but you can tidy this spreadsheet up. At the moment I have these helper cells here. And I can clean all of this up by adding all of these formulas directly into the named range itself. It makes the formula quite long and unwieldy, but it does allow you to tidy this up so you don't have to have these extra helper cells. If you want to do that, you can take cell C8 copy that formula, go back into the name manager and replace C8 which is here with all of that formula. Close and say yes you want to save the changes and that will continue to work no matter what you've chosen. And then you can take everything which is in C7 and replace any reference to C7 with all of this formula. What you have to bear in mind here is C7 appears more than once. It appears actually four times. But here's the first instance of C7. Paste. Here's the second instance of C7. Paste. Here's the third instance of C7. 
paste and the final instance of C7. Paste. Close that, save the changes, and you see that everything still works. And now you can get rid of all of these extra cells. So there you have it. A completely dynamic cascading drop-down list that updates itself automatically no matter how many lists you have, what they're called and how many values you have within them. I hope this has been helpful and thanks very much for watching.